Shalom, everyone. Uh, we are continuing our Sefer Yeshayahu. We are up to Perak Lamed Hay. Perak Lamed Dalit uh, described a devastating desolation of Edaim, uh, Limos Mashiach, or some other time that we're not sure of. But now we balance that with a beautiful description of the Geula of Am Yisrael. And this is clearly messianic, although as far as Yeshayahu is concerned, he might have thought this could be achieved even in the days of Chizkiyo HaMelech, who could have been Mashiach. Yesusum Midbar Vitsiya, the desolate desert that has been devastated by the enemy. And desert refers to Ruchnius and Gashmius. Let it rejoice. Sogel Arava. The Arava, the desert plains, should be happy. Tifrach, let it sprout out and grow, Kechavat like the lilies. Paroach Tifrach, let there be flowers, growth. Again, read this in Ruchnius as well as Gashmius. Besogel Avgilas Veranen. And to have joy in singing, Kavayd Alavanay Nitanla. Uh, you have been given the glory, or you will be given the glory of the Lebanon. Now, Lebanon, on one hand, is a beautiful, beautiful, majestic forest. But Chazal also say that Levanain is one of the words for the Beis Hamikdash, which is Malbin. It whitens, it purifies B'nai Israel of their sins. So when it says the glory of the Levanain has been given to you, or given to her, Yerushalayim is described as a woman, like Eicha, she's described as a widow. The glory of Levanayim means the Beis HaMikdash has been returned. So again, remember the history here. Yeshayahu is saying this around a hundred years before the destruction of the Beis HaMikdash. He's already talking about the Churban that will happen twice, and the eventual rebuilding. Hadar HaKarmel Vasharain, the glory of the Carmel. So Carmel refers to beautiful fields and vineyards are called Carmel. Sharon is the rich soil of the plain along the Mediterranean. That so this physically beautiful part of Eretz Israel is a symbol. It's the metaphor for the spiritual connection to Hashem. You will get the beauty of Carmel and Sharon. Hema Yiru Kavayt Hashem. They will experience the glory of Hashem. Hadar Elokeinu, the beauty of Hashem. Serving Hashem is not a yoke, it's not a burden. It's something beautiful. Chasku, and now he addresses the Jews, Throughout the years of Am Yisrael, who will be tzorachin, who will be unhappy, who will be embittered. And his message is, chasku yadayim rafais. Strengthen the hands that are weak in which you don't feel you have the ability to build and steig and grow. Birkayim kaishleis, the knees that are weak and not able to stand up, are made to strengthen. Now again, is this telling me to strengthen me if I'm weak? Or maybe the message is, go and strengthen other people. You get chizuk by strengthening others. Imru, now this is explicit in the next Pesach, Imru l'nim leif. Not only strengthen yourself, but say to those who are Hurried, meaning to say they're so agitated, they can't concentrate, they can't focus, they jump from thing to thing, they surf the web. Say to the people who can't focus, Chisku, strengthen yourself. Al Tiro, do not be afraid. Hine Elokechem Nokam, Kama. Behold, your God shall avenge, Kama, Yavo Gavul Elokim. Compensation, recompense, which could be for bad or for good, shall come from God. Hu yavo v'yoshachem. He will come. 
and redeem you. Oz, then, so what is then? So then could have two interpretations. Then can mean when the Geula comes, or maybe even before the Geula comes, when we internalize the message. That gives us chizik. Tipakachna ene ivrim. All of the Jews who were blind, they didn't think any of this is true. The eyes of the blind shall be opened. The oznei chershim and the ears of the deaf, tipasachna, shall be opened. Az yidalei ko'ayo piseach. And the lame shall skip around like an antelope. Now again, Machlekes Rambam and the Ravid, the Ravid actually learns Limota Mashiach, there'll be all these miracles, the lame people will be better. The Rambam says no, the Teva of the Eilam is still going to be there, and these are all Mishalim. So if they are Mishalim, it's referring to spiritual vitality. That he who is crippled, he's not able to believe, he's not able to understand, he will jump around with a new understanding. And the tongue of the mute will be able to sing. So again, this is describing miracles, but like the Rambam, this would be a mushal to spiritual rejuvenation. Water will open up in the middle of the desert. Nechalim, streams in the Arava, again, the desert area. Vayah Sharav, Sharav is land that is parched with uh, lack of water shall become an agam, like a swamp. on and that which is thirsty for liquid, l'mabuye mayim, for pool, we'll have pools of water. Mayim b'nevei tanim rivza. Water will accumulate in desolate areas that could only support wild dogs. Chotzir l'kanav the few patches of grass shall now become meadows. Sham Maslu Viderach. And Hashem will make a road. Derech HaKodesh Ikarila. So you understand the metaphor here. It's describing the idea that when Hashem's presence will be visible and understandable. There will be a road to Yerushalayim that everyone will take. And this will be called the Holy Road. Lo yavrenu tamei. Those who are tamei, those who are impure, will not be able to cross it. Now that may mean because there will not be tamei people. V'hu lamai haileich derech. And this is the pathway for the blind and the deaf who can now hear and now see. Derech ve'evilim lo yitu. And those who are foolish will no longer wander in the wrong direction. Lo yi asham aryeh. There will not be the lion who prits chayot and the breakthrough of wild animals. Baal yalena shall not go on the road. So again, like the Ravid, this is literal. Like the Rambam, the lion and the wild animals are the kaifrim and the apikorsim who try to destroy Torah. Lo simat seisham, they will not be found. Vahochu ge'ulim, and the Jews that come back are coming back, coming back from a physical gullus and coming back from a spiritual gullus. They are coming redeemed. And the last Pasuk of the Nevoah, because after that, uh, Parak Lamed Vav to Lamed Tes, is the historical uh, story of Chizkiyo and, this, and the Assyrians, the Mapala of Sancheirev, so there's some history that was repeated in the book of Malachim and Divri Ayamim. But the last Messianic Pasuk, Ufduye Hashem Yeshuvun. 
and those who are redeemed by Hashem, they will come back. Ubo Tzayin Berina. They will come back to Zion, which is Yerushalayim, in song. Simchas Olam Al Rosham. An eternal joy, a joy that will never stop, will be on top of their heads, describing it as a crown, although it's not a literal crown. Sosain Vesimcha Yasiko. The Navi's last words here are. They will achieve sasain and simcha. Now, sasain and simcha are two words that are synonymous for joy, uh, but uh, the Vilna Gaon says there is a difference. Simcha is the simcha of what you're looking forward to, and sasain is the joy of what you've already experienced. So we say in Kel Adon on Shabbos, Smechem B'Tseisam, when the sun and the moon go forth at the beginning of every day, smechem, they have simcha because of what they will do in the day. Sasim bevayam, when they finish their job, they have sasim. So sasim v'simcha is that when the geula comes, they will have sasim over the mitzvahs that they did that merited the geula, that sasain over the past, simcha is what they're going to experience. Because remember, the simcha you're going to experience is a function of the sasain of what you already did. Chazal say, Mi shemechen b'erev Shabbos, yechol b'Shabbos. You have to prepare on Erev Shabbos that which you eat on Shabbos. And ultimately, what will happen is nos yagain v'yanacha. Groaning and sadness will run away. It will have no place in this world of sasain v'simcha. May we be zaycha to experience this with all of Klal Yisrael, b'mheira v'yamei.